All right, Invasion Search. A rematch from the Winners Finals Game 5. Obviously, once again, bread and butter. They love this map as well, so we were always down to play it because this was our, you know, our favorite. So we knew it was basically always going to be in the series versus them. Uh, so let's get right into it. Invasion Search. We start on defense. Again, they picked offense round one. I, I'm not sure. They, they must have had more success with offense round one, but I swear every time we play them on it and they start offense with round one, um, we, would, we would always win it on defense. So regardless, whatever. This is, a, this is a fake smoke by Ant. He's smoking to just try and get them tweaking about Broken, obviously. But we're playing just safe here. Again, safe on the round one. We have no trophies to work with, so we can't really play on the B site. We're just going to go for a possibility of the, of the wall bang. And obviously, you know the wall bang that New York used towards back palace. That's what Ant's setting up right here. We're basically giving up the plant on both sites and playing retake. AG gets Dante really weak over here. So we're still just getting, you know, playing picks, getting info here. There's nothing for us to do. We don't need to move or anything. We're basically just waiting for them to plant. They're going to waste their tax on, on construction and, and fork to make sure that we're not there. They're not seeing anything, so they're going to eventually end up going for, for this plan over here. Literally, you know, like, we have Ken watching the cross towards towards Fork and towards Bomb. He knows that we're on Bomb. Ant gets that information, starts wall banging. 22 seconds now. Brandon actually gets one of the kills on Bomb. And again, now they have to replan it if they're going to plan it. At this point, Caesar's going to try and make a play through middle. But Ant, or sorry, AG is still over here for our... For our team and he's just gonna try and finesse around the tank rips him though with a headshot now 2v4 just group up i talked about this before but dante moves to the left here and then moves to the right and uh, brandon actually thinks he goes he goes left but ken sees him cross back to the right and he just trusts uh, ken's calm and, and looks to the right he's playing behind dvd here free kill Last guy alive towards uh, the ice cream wall. Free retake. Just free. Maybe they just weren't expecting us to do the wall bang because I don't know if we'd ever done it in a match before, before that. But again, defense round one when you don't have trophies to work with, it's not a bad, not a bad start. Not a bad play to do it because you're giving up the site anyway, basically. So, going into the winners finals, we were heavy going back to our A stuff, but we just wanted to keep them on our toes. Now, obviously, we weren't going to go straight default B, but we were going to feel them out a little bit, just see what they were trying to do. So, Paco's pushed up here, beat on. They actually had another guy cafe as well. Ants going super deep into their into their p2 basically and kind of in their construction and this is simply because uh i, I think we we had seen these people towards mid and, and everything and we only saw one cross deep so we just wanted to maybe possibly play up towards b but i don't know i don't like personally ant just going alone by himself like this while we're trying to do stuff middle uh, it doesn't really make sense to me. We should have someone else with him here. I don't know really what we were doing here. I forget what the comms were like. So Kiz wins the one. Now we're kind of just fucked because the bomb's over here. They can watch from mid-cut. They can stack b site, And we're kind of just screwed. I think Ant thought he would have a an opening based on the only one person cross. But it, it was kind of just like a fake on that part because they could just rotate easily and, and kind of move where they're at every single exit there so short well let go of but if you like best advantage all year against optic has been the SD they need it here the most so we we try and double nade towards that uh that white car you know the old uh what would you call it old P5 I guess 
where the the new or i guess new p5 quote unquote but where it was uh, on invasion at the end of the year super aggressive towards bdom where we're trying to get some type of info on them possibly like peeking out of blue peeking out of you know bottom bottom tree or something we just don't know their, 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 that they're DVD at this moment, which is very, very scary. But just in case, you know, they do peek out a DVD and kill AG, we do have, uh, who is this? Uh, I believe it's Brandon. Yeah, Brandon right there for a possible trade. But what he's trying to do is he he's just at the mid tank watching the super deep. So instead of going over here and going what we would call like Lamar Strider, Spotter Deep Street and watching this, he, he watches the same cross from from B Dom, but can also help out in case they go B or in case they go mid like this. So Kismet activates off of AG having the other gunfight. And Paco gets a free blood on this guy mid cut. Let's see if we can get a trade though. You know, Ken gets some shots off, doesn't get anything. Brandon isn't close enough to get an instant trade. He ends up getting the kill on Kiz, but again, they have more numbers so they can work with more. So Dante can hit us out here through through mid tank as well so maybe it's just on you know if ag is going to play that super deep up he's got to make sure that they can't just open the dvd door and, and play like that or at least like look at it or something maybe i don't know it's it's just we shouldn't be able to get killed from dvd and not have the uh, like the eventual trade because brandon's all the way be dom So they go up 2-1. We're now on an offense. That's a huge offensive win because, again, you don't find many of those here. And it's going to get pushed into DB quick. Once again, they're they're playing super aggressive towards, you know, Cafe. They're double Cafe right now. But look at this. Number 7 started out mid-tank, but he's going to rotate back. He's going to rotate back and help uh, number 6. And that opens this up for anyone to possibly do something through mid for our team. They're just playing Noah mid tank. Obviously, Kiz is actually going to go back to it. So this is a really good timing for us because obviously Kiz doesn't see anything. He's going to wrap back from mid cut to go back to our, towards B Dom. And this is big because we had noticed going into these matches that they would only play Kiz or Paco B Dom. And the big thing about those two players is that none of them use trophies. So we could just double nade them if we needed to. Double nade a Kismet on the you know the mid tank. Now they have two people cafe are their mid is fully open. Number six has to pick it up if he's gonna pick it up. They killed Dante who's wrapping from B site to go mid cut to help him out. And that's perfect for us because now the last two guys are, are A side. Caesar gets one, but we know that they're basically going to be like hugged up here. Unfortunately, they get like both the kills, but now we know where they're at, so he can play for it. We know that yeah, this guy pushed through DVD, and we know the other guys towards somewhere cafe. Two v one. Just make sure that we're cutting everything if possible. AG gets tagged up weak, so we know where he is. Make sure that we're just playing together. Get the bomb down. And don't get singled out. Again, he gets super weak once again from Skies, but Brandon can, can trade him out right here. Takes a weird little bit, but he was just hiding behind the pillar. But that first play just comes from us being like, okay, they're going to play Kiz or Paco be dom but they don't have a trophy to work with so this is just a free it's a free blood every time they're gonna go towards a side this time and what do you know day one hard counter double up back cafe in the freezer they get one but we get two trade battle goes to us we see with this guy mid ag can hit him out if he wants to he sees him. Free kill. Last guy alive is Caesar. He's back there base. Mannequin. Okay, we know where he's at. Now it's just a 1v2. And this, oh, this is actually the 1v1. So he actually rips Kenny here. Brandon, another 1v1 with Caesar. 
the league, two of the most clutch players in the league. Here we go. The stun lands. Brandon just rips him here. Just finessing the car. Another clutch by Brandon. Just absolutely insane with the clutches the entire year. He is willing to gun you down on the cross. He's willing to get that information. Optic knew when they we go back on offense. Brandon is now going to play a little bit deeper now and actually hit towards his P3. Maybe possibly make a late play towards towards the left side here. He would do this maybe like once every game. The other guys working up through middle. Again, either Kismet or Paco at the mid tank. Just double nade him. Easy double nade. AG and, and Ant, I believe. Free first blood. Free first blood. We know that no one's mid tank anymore at this point. We could actually just go straight to mid tank to A if we wanted to, but we don't know that they could possibly be playing like standing spot or, or back mid over, over here. So we're still trying to figure out where they're at. They have one guy rotate from the B side through mid cut to pick up this, uh, you know, this mid tank where Paco died. AG gets killed over here like that, which is really unfortunate because you, you'd expect... I, I thought Brandon would at least have the trade here, but I guess not. We just... I think they weren't expecting someone to quickly refill this like that because we already got the kill towards mid-tank and we didn't have the information that this guy rotated through the through mid-cut. So that's a good play by, by Dante. Kismet actually gets pushed up into a tree and, and Ken just reads him or, or sees him. Oh, Ken's underneath him. He just jumps over Ken. Ken turns around, free blood. We could go B right now if we wanted to. And it's going to actually chow this. So I would have liked him to at least wait it out a little bit, just work with us. But maybe that's a little over rogue thing. Because we do know that someone is mid tank. Obviously, AG died to him. So. Ant's, Ant's looking for a possibly gunfight, but maybe overheat because we're not using really any teamwork there. Thirty seconds to get bombed down. They're giving up the B plant. We now focus back towards the B plant. We've actually already made it towards ice cream, with this, which is big because Caesar doesn't see this. This is a big by timing by by Brandon because he's able to get into ice cream. Before he sees him, you know, Caesar gets this kill on uh, on Ken, but Brandon can just get the trade right away. Now it's a 1v1 with Dante, and actually Dante, I think wall bangs him here. Yeah, he, he tries to get past the doorway, so I guess it's not a wall bang, but he just tries to time it. That could have been a cool 1v1, but good plays by Dante that round, honestly. So now we do a little something different, uh, a little more of aggressive A push on the defense for us to counter any fast A thing from, from them. We see Skyzers at the, at the back tank. They know that they we're now playing super aggressive A, so we're going to fall back into a more of a defaulty setup. And he's going to try and make his way back towards, towards mid cut, yeah. So obviously they're going to try and maybe possibly worked a little bit more towards B because they saw aggressive A push out of us. So that's why we fall back into this, just in case they, they're, they're reading that from us. And here comes New York. There's one, and there's two. So we see people cross towards construction. Ken's playing super safe over here, obviously not on the site. Uh, he's just gonna give it up and we can play retake. Ants made his way through B Dom to DVD. So, you know, it's really hard on Caesar to watch everything on this pinch. He even was even watching DVDs for a little bit, but he gave it up at the exact wrong time. So good timing by Ant to get into this because if he does this, you know, a second earlier, look at where Caesar's looking at. Caesar gives it up. The timing's there. He can now hit back DVDs. Get a free first blood on the bomb carrier, Dante. He sees Skies back over here, gets shot from him. He's now going to prone underneath these pillars over here. 
throws a detonate in case Caesar pushes. He also gets a a confirmation from AG that someone is DVD. Kills the guy DVD because he knows the guy DVD is going to try and kill him from his back because Caesar is calling for help. Caesar's now pushing to blue, rips him, and Ant's standing up. Absolute god play. To be able to do this and like to work off the timings, but also, you know, finesse like this and work work around the information that you have and that they have. Obviously, we also get the kill on, on number seven here uh, in ice cream, but no one really cares about that. Uh, but but Ant, you know, reads the, the possibility of the teamwork from New York. And then, and then obviously last guy alive and just rip Caesar. Insane play by Ant. And I love him standing up. All right, four three. We go back to the, to the offense now. You know, standard default. Treehouse. We're gonna have Ken go instantly up to top blue to watch the cross to broken. We have you know our main cross, and then AG actually goes solo towards the A site here, towards Cafe. So we know that there's people broken here at this point. So that's why we're, we're motioning more towards the A side. We, we, based off Ken's info, info, we see that people cross broken. We're going to leave Ant here in case he wants to make sure that no one pushes through, uh, like through tree this way or through broken to flank us. So he's going to be our lone island guy on that side. We're going to work towards the A side and, and middle here though. And kind of the same thing on the flip side, you know, they saw, uh, they know that we saw them cross to broken and have people broken. So then they're going to now readjust and go back a little bit more towards A, expecting us to hit A because of the info that we saw B side. That makes sense. Good luck checking this. A bomb site though. That's where the party is. Yeah, flank secure, but Kismet's going to be the guy right now. So they have one deep Nero. The closest they have to the ASD is is standy spot. So they can be playing any one of these credits, you know, over here, here. They could be playing on the mid tank as well. But what they have is number six and number seven, or sorry, number six and number eight, both playing towards the B side. And they're just going to have Kiz work off of people trying to get the plant down. So they get the information from Caesar that we're planning. Kiz can activate off of this. But unfortunately, you know, while this is happening, Ken's reading Dante coming mid-cut. So big read by, by Ken. Obviously, he's not going to plant the bomb instantly. He's going to get info right away to see if they try and provide help because he knows that Caesar saw us cross the bomb. Rips Dante. We know the other guy is standing spot. Kismet gets away because he doesn't want to, you know, he doesn't want to scam. So he's going to try and work off of Caesar here. Paco jumps out of broken, somehow kills Ant like this. This was an insane kill. But if we got that kill, it was just wraps. It would have been a 4v2, and we could have wrapped a B if we needed to. But because they get that kill there, we have to possibly pay for, for Paco over here towards ZVDs. And that's what kind of Brandon's over here for. He's going to play our pinch while we get the bomb down. And, you know, Kismet's playing this patio, waiting for the bomb to get planted. So... He's just activating off whenever it gets planted. But what happens here is Ken somehow manages to finesse his way out. I don't know how he put on the absolute skates movement, whatever you want to get back into cafe. AG has over him his cover, kills Kismet for it. And it was, it was just a perfect plant teamwork. Get the fuck out of there. Uh, play. I, I actually don't know how he got out of there um, off of the plant. We see Paco towards DVDs. He gets a weird timing because he throws the smoke. So, you know, Ken actually doesn't see him coming out. But Ken does see this guy go towards bomb. So he knows that Caesar got, has gone towards bomb. We have number three, AG, playing for the bomb guy. And we also have, uh, you know, Ken now playing uh, the, you know, the Paco kill because he sees him now after it has been smoked. So even though he does die to Paco here, which, you know, he was going to because of the smoke, he didn't see him right away. Paco has first shots. 
we're still going to be able to get uh, a possible, you know, kill on this guy Cafe. He's kind of trapped here now with, with Brandon as, as well. He, there's too much he has to look at. Brandon gets the kill with Caesar. 1v2 with Paco now. Bomb down. He still has to defuse. Just play together. Fortunately, he headshots Brandon, but again, AG is right there for the trade, knowing he's going to try and come out of the cafe. Really good job working that bomb plant. Like him, like Adrian and Ken working that to make sure that he gets out alive somehow is incredible to me. I still don't know how he got off a bomb so quick and didn't die to Kiz, who was waiting for it. So 5-3, we go on defense once again. They're stacking the B side. We can do our, our, our you know, our normal kind of regular A stuff, or sorry, B stuff. Ken, super deep safe. And it's going to kind of cross towards broken. But in this play, AG's got the balls to just run down middle and kind of do the same thing he did in that previous round. But he sees no one watching the cross, so he's going to take the timing to, to go up and try and push DVDs. Gets the kill on Paco, probably the most important kill of the round because it's because it is their playmaker. Ants cross to broken now. It's gonna be super hard for them to go towards B side, so they're probably thinking about wrapping here. He's now in a you know a weird credit. He, he gets out of it, but he stays in broken, and now they have to clear him first. Obviously, Ken gets the info towards him because he's watching over. He can you know basically say Ant, you know he's at the window. Chal him, gets the kill on the guy. Towards the window, dies on the trade though. But again, 3v2, we're still playing off the info. We know that these guys are towards the B side and can and can just adjust to it. AG's gonna be our, our lone island guy towards the A side, but Brandon, once he sees that you know Ken has gotten to a comfortable position towards the forklift, he can play here by himself and he can try and help out AG watching his middle. So that AG doesn't have to watch everything towards this A side. Because he's, he's trying to take timings towards the right. He's trying to look at the back door. Possibly look towards, towards B-Dom. Weird timing where Brandon actually doesn't see them get towards the, the tank. But once he gets to the tank of his, himself, he can now see them. So he sees them. Kiz tries to chow AG. Last guy alive mid-tank. AG's weak, so he's just you know healing back up. Gets uh, Caesar really weak. Ken actually doesn't kill him here. But Caesar's in a 1v2 and Ken is just going to play DVD. Somehow gets ripped here. I don't know how he gets ripped so hard, but Caesar wins this. That's a, that's a huge one by Caesar. But Dan, Brandon just playing jiggles back and forth from the front cafe and, you know, inside cafe. And finally gets him. Gets the kill. And at that moment, that was for me like, okay, we've, we're going to win this because... We knew they loved, loved, loved Invasion and Search as well. We go up 4-1. Brandon knows it too. This is the moment he realizes too. 